there is absolutely no data or evidence to suggest that putting someone in prison for 30 or 40 years serves any purpose to protect safety, to rehabilitate. It's just something that we do because it feels good. It makes us feel better in the moment. The United States is the leading jailer of the entire world. We have about 5% of the world's population. We have nearly a quarter of the world's prison population. That didn't happen overnight. Uh, we made conscious policy choices and sentencing decisions over a long period of years. And basically what happened is we sent a lot of people to prison. We sent them there for a very long time and we're keeping them there for a very long time. And when you do that, your prison population soars and you have a mass incarceration problem. It's seen exponential growth. Now nearly two million people in America are in jails and prisons. My dad was sentenced to 38 and a half years. My husband, Jerry James, sentenced to 73 years. Sincere Born Allah was sentenced to 45 years in prison. I received a 30 year sentence. It shouldn't be logical for someone to think that someone deserves to be in prison for 30, 40, 50 years. It's not okay. We are giving children, we are basically giving children three and four lifetimes. The people who commit crimes when they're 20, 25, even very serious crimes, by the time they get to 40 or 45, the person who committed that crime is gone. Their youth, the way they thought at that time, the things they cared about, those things are gone. And continuing to incarcerate that person now for another 15, 20, 40 years, it's cruel, it's foolish, it's wasteful. I am not the same person I was last week. I am not the same person that I will be in the future. People grow every day and everybody at least deserves to be looked at and, and shown to be worthy of a second chance. We've been conditioned to just be fearful of certain types of people. Sometimes we can let fear drive us to, to, to say we shouldn't give people opportunities, we shouldn't believe in people. And that can, really, that can really harm the potential of people. What makes me uncomfortable is when you look at incarcerated individuals as though they've lost the right to be human beings. They are fathers, they are mothers, they are brothers, they are friends, they have dreams and hopes and desires. And most people who are incarcerated simply want an opportunity to show that they aren't that same person that's in that mugshot. If you just wipe people off, lock them up and throw away the key, and you assume that that is faithful obedience to Jesus, that is not consistent with what Jesus teaches love is. And so I think it's very difficult for anyone to, to say that Jesus would be okay with us looking and, and casting aside people. So in order to fix mass incarceration, we have to be willing to say, even people who committed very serious offenses decades ago, they deserve a second chance. So second look legislation allows a person in prison to go back to court after they've served a period of years. It could be 10, 15, 20 years. A sentencing judge can take a second look at an extreme prison sentence to determine whether additional punishment is still warranted. It gives them an opportunity to convince the court that they're ready to come home, that they've changed, that their circumstances have changed. Go before the court and be seen as who they are today and not who they were 20, 30, 40 years ago. That their original sentence is no longer necessary to keep the public safe. It's an opportunity for them to show their rehabilitation. It's second chances for that person in prison and it's second chances for us to determine if a sentence that once made sense just doesn't make sense anymore. It's so important to care about people and to understand that the system always deserves a reform to make sure we're getting it right. We should adopt second look laws because people change. People grow, people can be redeemed. People who have done terrible things can be redeemed. And I think, in fact, those redemption stories are some of the most powerful stories that we hear, not just in the criminal justice system, but in life. People can overcome their mistakes. They can find restoration, if not with the person they harmed, then with the community they harmed. When they said, Jesus, how many times do I, do I, how many times do I have to forgive somebody 
before, um, before I don't have to forgive him anymore. Is it, you know, two times, three times? Uh, do I get two chances, three chances, four chances? He says, 70 times seven. Uh, that's how many chances he's saying. It's, it, you don't give up on people. Everybody deserves a second chance. Everyone deserves a second chance. Every single person deserves a second chance at freedom. I believe anybody can be redeemed. I don't cast anyone aside. The only person I know that they've missed their last shot is when they stop breathing. And I think it's so important that we focus on that. It's so important that we believe in people, that we believe in what their story could tell.